Is this what your summer's been looking like so far? Ew. You need to get it together. But don't worry. There's still time to turn things around. And what if I told you that you don't need friends, you don't need a lot of money, you just need to get out of bed? When's the last time you went to the public library? If you say recently, you're lying. I haven't been to the library in years. While we've been sleeping on these public community centers of connection, knowledge, and art, they have been leveling up. They have gone on without us. I was like, hmm, what should I do today? Like, lay to bed forever. I stumbled across the library's website. And I was like, wait. It literally has this, like, VR learning center. It has an entire sewing center where you can go and take classes. And they have machines and teachers. They have recording studios. Are you kidding? Guys, I am not even gonna lie. I was gonna go in that library, have the time of my life. That did not happen. Well, I went in, didn't work out. I stand a, a little corrected in my mission for today. I was so confident, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed going into that library. Um, it just... <sighs> I don't know, I'm very sensitive to the vibe of public places and it just had the most weirdest, unsettling vibe. It was kind of musty. They have been leveling up. I mean, hey, it was worth a shot. I'm not gonna lie, I was putting a lot of eggs in that library basket. So what now? Summer is the season of reading. I don't know, I guess you go to the beach more, it's good to read on the beach. Everyone's just reading during the summer. I feel like school and like traditional K through 12 education, even into college, but my mind kind of changed in college, but it's so discouraging of reading. It makes reading a chore. It makes reading something that you have to get quizzed on and tested about. I remember that we read really good, classic, valuable literature in all of my English classes, but I always remember this pervasive sense of anxiety while you're reading because you're gonna get quizzed on it the next day. So instead of enjoying the book or even putting myself into the narrative, because reading is a very imagination-oriented activity, the best part about it is being able to put yourself into a new world that's in the pages, you know what I'm saying? And I could never do that with the books we were reading in school because I was so focused on trying to memorize everything I was reading that it never was enjoyable. And so for a while I thought, well, I'm just not a reader. I don't like reading. It turns out that wasn't the case. I just didn't know how to read for enjoyment. So I became a reader again. I started reading like crazy. This year, for some reason though, I have been in such a reading slump. Like I have good books that I wanna read. I have a whole list. I don't know what it is. So I really just gotta like lock back into reading. But I thought I would give you some good book recommendations. The one I'm reading right now, Communion by Bell Hooks, The Female Search for Love. If you've read All About Love by Bell Hooks, this is a different approach. I think All About Love tackles the issue of love as it pertains to like society as a whole. Communion is more about like the female specific experience with love, how we are socialized to need love typically from a man but not in all cases just a source of love from a relationship in general and how that's different from male socialization men don't grow up with the same kind of pressure to find a relationship and make that the center of their world or that their worth relies on whether or not they can get a relationship realizing that is one thing but then facing it which this book is helping me do a lot like really get to the bottom of what i truly want out of a relationship or if a relationship is really the thing that I'm longing for. This is a good one. Love Bell Hooks. She makes everything so easy and understandable. She just makes so much sense. And I love her takes on love, so. This is called This Time Tomorrow. If you're somebody who feels a painfully large amount of nostalgia, you will love this. It's about, basically this woman wakes up on her 40th birthday, she kind of finds a ripple in time where she can go back to life starting from her 16th birthday. She kind of gets the choice to like make different choices. Really changes the way you look at nostalgia. Such a deep, deep message. Nostalgia is something that I'm facing all the time. I'm always, always nostalgic about something. Even in the present moment, I'm like, oh, I'll be nostalgic for this one day, ugh. What? And then last, I have not finished this one either. This is about how far I've been getting through all my books. It's so sad. 
Because it's not that I don't like them, I just stop. I don't know, I need to get it together, right? But it's called The Loneliness File because one of my goals for this year was to read more memoirs. I'll just read the top part. In our age of digital hyperconnection, Athena Dixon invites us to consider this question with depth, heart, and ferocity, investigating the gaps that technology cannot fill and confronting a lifetime of loneliness. So real. I'm an only child, so loneliness kind of defines my life in a way. So far, I have felt very seen and heard by her writing, which I love that about memoirs because it's real. It's real true life is aligned with yours and it just makes you feel, ironically, less alone. So those are my book recommendations. I'm just gonna lay here for a while, look at the water, pretend I'm in a movie, and read my little bookie book. If you do nothing else this summer, I mean absolutely nothing else, you could not even step out of your bed one single time for all I care, as long as you start journaling. <laughs> I've been journaling on and off since I was very young. For a while I stopped. I had a heart shattering incident which made me start journaling again. And these are all of my filled journals from the past three years of my life. I'm telling you every single page is filled. Is this insane? I don't know. The most common thing I hear is that people tell me they don't know what to write about. They're inconsistent. Your journal is not for anybody else except for you and your future self. Make it all about you. You can look at a picture of yourself and feel so disconnected from the version of yourself that's in that picture that you don't know almost anything about yourself. It makes you feel so much more connected to yourself and all of your versions and your process of evolution because you can go back and place yourself specifically into your mind at that time. Patterns is one of the biggest things that you're gonna be able to see from your journaling. If you feel confused about a certain dynamic that somehow just like you can't get past, maybe whenever you make a new friend, it always starts or ends in the exact same way or anytime you get in a relationship, you consistently have the same issues. Journaling is going to expose to you in ways that you can either choose to accept or deny. I'm not here to tell you what you do with your own journaling. Putting things into words is such a release, especially if you're someone who tends to ruminate a lot or you have anxiety or anything that's thought-based. I know instantly that if there's something I've been thinking about, I'm like, okay, I immediately need to write about this. It's the only way I can get it out. I will keep a thought loop for days, weeks, months, even years on end if I don't keep it in check and find a way to release it. You can follow any formula that you want. Prompts are a good way, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't follow prompts that often. It just feels too restrictive and it feels like I'm in school. You know, it's just, it doesn't, it's not as free flowing for me. I know that one day these are gonna mean more than anything to me. Like I said, it's one thing to have evidence of your past self in a picture, but it's a completely another thing to have a peek into your mind. You forget so much that goes on in the day to day. Having such a detailed record, I know, is just gonna mean everything to me. If I convinced you to become a journaler, let me know because I'm very passionate about this topic. Let me tell you something. I have become a Pilates girly, okay? I love it. I love it. I love to put on like my cute little set. I feel so, so motivated when I'm working out with other people. And it's just such a good group vibe and I feed off everyone else's energy. I've been doing this hot Pilates class so good. Pilates done. I'm hot. Oh my god. But I feel good. I feel so good.
Hello friends, we are gathered here at the end of the video because there is one last very important task that I cannot let the summer end without finishing and that is scrapbooking yes old lady hobbies are top tier hobbies so i have this handmade notebook which you guys have seen me talk about this before i got it from i think it was spoonbill bookstore in williamsburg i started this mm, back in the winter i'm not i can't remember exactly oh I wrote it down because I'm a genius. Journal started, oh, you can't read it, but it says journal started February 16th, 2024. Oh, and I'm an even more genius because I wrote where I got it from. I got it from Spoonbill Sugartown Booksellers in Williamsburg, New York. And I wrote a little intro just in case any snoopers go snooping, at least they'll know what they're looking at, you know? Started with my stuff from Europe because I still have this bag literally f oh my gosh this is bad full of trinkets and now i have my asia trinkets over here sitting in the corner collecting dust because i need to get this done here's some examples of things that you can collect if you want to start scrapbooking most of my items are typically paper because that way i can glue them down these are all my museum tickets on this page this is my boarding pass i made a little thing for shopping and eating i keep receipts and i guess i got like a rewards card from this coffee place down the street that i only have two stamps from so Clearly I was not a loyal member. This is how trinkets become useless, sitting around. And this is how trinkets become a work of art, okay? Start collecting little things from your daily life. For now, I have plenty to sift through. I need to get some more pages done. Let's get to work. a few hours later i finished actually the rest of my trinkets i got through that bag pretty well anyways we're at the end of the video i hope that this gave you some inspiration for things that you can do to stop having a lame summer because now there's no excuse let me know how your summer is going what are you up to how are you feeling i would love to know i think summer is so much more of a reset time than the new year like summer is my new year so let me know what your summer resolutions are i will see you in the next video